This is just showing a couple of wiring examples of those STB buttons and tied into an ATF M10K, for example. And notice that on both types, the solid state as well as the relay, that there are two uh, redundant microprocessors or microcontrols in each one of these. And again, that's what gives us that highest type 3C rating. Any internal fault that is going to be caught is going to be something that is going to be able to be seen actually on the button itself. There's an LED right here that will glow if there is, or flash actually, if there's any type of a, of a fault that is caught within the two controllers looking at each other and making sure everything's working fine. So a lot of great uh, monitoring capabilities with these models. Now the two-end control must be arranged so that it's far enough apart so that the operator cannot deliberately access both of them with one arm and have a free arm while he's in the hazard. So it has to be far enough away and positioned so that it does take both of your fingers or both your hands to actuate this thing. Now there's two types of presses that these are probably used on. One of them is called a part revolution press, for example, which actually can be stopped at any time. You raise your fingers, and if you're at a point where you now need to load a part and just jog the motion, you can use the two-end controls on that type of a press because it lets you stop and start uh, at random here in case you need to do a single stroke or a continuous function. Uh, you have the control with those type of presses. The other types are the full revolution, where now you're only needing these buttons to basically give you that start inhibit. Once you start it, these full revolution presses will just take off and do a full revolution until it's back up at the top again. There's no capability of stopping it in the middle of it. So that's why they're basically used to initiate the cycle, but it's more or less a two-hand trip. You're starting it and when you let go, it's already on its way and it's really uh, no other need for that two-hand button. But at least it gets you back where you belong distance-wise to start that motion. Uh, again, the, the run bars are something that we accommodate and allow you to purchase where things are already separated where they belong and the buttons are already encased in the assembly. Here's just an example here where it's a run bar that actually has the two buttons on either end kind of positioned at an angle like you see here. So you're just simply putting your finger in place. It's very ergonomic and comfortable to do that. And then there's some that actually have an e-stop that might be also on the front. So if you do see somebody on the back of the machine that's actually where they don't belong, you can hit an e-stop and it's going to stop that whole machine or whatever part of the machine that they're actually uh, into. But there's also things that can be added on certain models like the easy lights here uh, or it can be something where it's mounted instead of in front of the machine. You can have a nice telescoping type of a stand that you have it on because you need to be back far enough because of the stop distance needed to be able to use this. And this is just showing a, a, a bit out of a data sheet that's showing you all those different model numbers and what the, what the accommodating features are on each one of those, if there's an e-stop or not or whatever. So good information. There we go. We're at the end of this, and thanks for joining us. See you next time.